Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, welcome back to this lecture series on spatial statistics and spatial econometrics. Today we are going to start with a new chapter on working with ARC GIS. So here we make a transition from lectures to hands-on exercises for spatial statistics and spatial econometrics. And the first module in this process is working with ARC GIS. After this model, module on RGIS, we will have a module on working with R. So uh, combine these two modules will ramp you up in order to sort of, you know, uh, 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 apply all the tools that you've studied in the lecture series, including the variograms, the exploratory analysis, the uh, regressions, and so on and so forth on these two software. Now remember, you know, for certain functions, uh, one software may be better than the other. So knowledge of both these softwares in combination is, is, is sort of important if you are, you know, uh, working uh, uh, professionally with spatial data. Okay. So in this series of working with ARC GIS, I will first talk about the software uh, itself, how to download it, and then we will start working with a real world data set. Okay. So, uh, so let's let's start with uh, this uh, with the software itself, and let's look at the process or the steps to download the software. Okay, so I am simply working with a Google search portal, and I'm going to say download Arc GIS. Okay, so it gives me this first option: pro.arcgis.com download ArcGIS Pro. The second option in the series is download ArcGIS for Office and it is coming from www.esri.com. Okay, so ultimately ESRI is the main host or provider of the ArcGIS software, all the modules and so on and so forth. So let's work with the first link that we have stumbled upon. Okay. Okay, so here we are. So, uh, so here are the steps that you get for downloading uh, ArcGIS on your system, and you know we will be looking at this uh, this this module of downloading ArcGIS Pro from my ESRI. So, I'm just going to click on go to my ESRI. You can also look at the steps to do that. So, you know here are the steps provided on the same page. Um, there you go. So, you can follow the steps from here. But the main sort of host, as I said, is this, uh, you know, uh, 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 web domain called uh, 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 my ESRI. Okay, so here under products, we have ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Pro, Enterprise and Platform. We are, we are interested in ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so we are going to just click on that and it gives me now, it gives me it says ArcGIS Pro, do you want to go to pricing or sign up for a free trial? Okay, and then there's a bunch of information, how does it work, you know, what are the different utilities and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to talk about both the price, priced version as well as the trial. Uh, for students who are, you know, uh, for the purpose of this course, uh, the trial version will be sufficient for you. Okay, however, I should make it very clear right away that you know the trial version is not to be used for any commercial purposes, any professional purposes, uh, not even for instruction, right? So I can, you know, for the trial version, you guys can just go in, you can say sign up for a free trial and it just, you know, says professional students, okay, so you know, you want the students version. So here you say sign up for trial, okay. 
So here we are. So it has uh, you know a lot of uh, you know options here. It has a student gallery. This this it has software access. So we'll go to software access. But let's wait a minute before we go to the software access and just scroll down a little bit. Scrolling down, it gives us a very important resource called online lessons, and these are really important lessons. Okay, uh, some of them are really interesting. Uh, they will be very interesting. But a very very good thing is that you know. Uh, uh, even though you know we are studying, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, formally introducing you uh, with the functionality of ArcGIS, uh, what I want to point out is this incredible resource that ESRI provides for uh, the new beginners, the professional workers, you know, the for researchers and so on and so forth. So, for example, choose the right projection. So now you know we have looked at our lectures and we know what geographic, uh, you know, projection systems are. Uh, you know, why are they so important? You know, for example, remember the World Geodetic System, WGS 1984, um, and you know, the whole idea of projecting the sphere of the earth on a two plane, two dimensional plane, that is a piece of paper holding a lamp and getting an orthogonal projection. Uh, how do we, how does that translate into the latitudes and longitudes based? coordinate system and so on and so forth, right? So now you can actually study the same thing in detail here, uh, you know, by clicking uh, an hour lecture just on choosing the right projection. So I recommend that you go through this particular session. But apart from that, you know, you have these very interesting sessions, classifying land cover, exploring future, uh, you know, uh, uh, climate projections. Then if you go down, there is design symbology on a thematic map, something we will also uh, study in this module. There are things like, you know, uh, uh, investigate pollution patterns. You know, if you're from Delhi or from India in general, you'll be very interested in, in investigating pollution patterns for India, right? And the data are out there, right? I mean, there is Central Pollution uh, Control Board, uh, you know, the Delhi Pollution Control Committee. Uh, so all these agencies provide us with data, incredible amounts of data, which can be mapped, right? I mean, they are all mappable data and they can be analyzed using the tools that we have studied in this course. So, uh, you know, all these nice modules can be used and can be exploited for your own benefit. Um, all it requires is investing some time and it will really uh, ramp you up in terms of using ArcGIS in a professional manner. Okay. All right. So, coming back to accessing the software. So, you know, on this student page, I can just click on access software. And then, you know, on the right hand side, you can see it says sign up for education trial. So, all you need to do is provide your information, uh, your email ID, uh, the one that you want to register. And you what you are going to get is a 21 day trial. Right. I'm again saying, you know, the amount of material for ArcGIS in this course is going to be approximately one week. And uh, probably even little less than that. So, uh, you know, a, a three week trial is more than sufficient for you to really get ramped up. Okay, so it's pretty simple. You will basically sign up for it. You will get an email, you will activate your license and then you, you it provides you all the steps to download and, you know, uh, basically have the software for your use. What I will be using on the other hand is the, the paid version for this particular class, right? So I'm going to for that just click on go to pricing. Okay, here we are. So under uh, go to pricing, you know, it gives me, okay, you know, here is the core, uh, core GIS software. And it says, do you want ArcGIS for the desktop? Do you want it for different user types, for credits, for personal use and so on and so forth. I'm just going to go for, um, uh, you know, ArcGIS software, uh, desktop. Okay, so I'm going to say pricing. Okay, here, you know, I need it for individuals. So here is ArcGIS for personal use. And this is the one that we want, right? So either for personal use or for student use, you know, the one year software is 8,500, you know, including taxes, it comes around 10,000 rupees per, a, per year, which is a bit pricey, but not that all that pricey either, right? I mean, uh, given the fact that there is all this resource that is available uh, to us in terms of the learning sessions to the functionality of software, we will see is, is very, very, uh, you know, uh, uh, advanced. The software can do a lot of things. 
it is integrated with python so those of you, you who are uh, you know uh, uh, you know who have a an extensive uh, background in programming uh, this software will provide you with incredible uh, you know resources okay so the idea is that you know we will simply uh, you know whichever route you want to take uh, i would say that you know you should definitely make use of the trial version for yourself um, uh, there are there is also a open source version of arcgis out there which is called qgis now the, the i am not teaching qgis here uh, but the functionalities may be similar you know if not the same uh, the documentation etc may not be as uh, you know uh, systematic uh, as for arcgis um, but you know i know that you know as a researcher i am aware that that many of my colleagues uh, indeed use uh, QGIS. So you are free to also explore that. Uh, I believe that you know learning the functionality on ArcGIS will also help you, uh, you know, uh, uh, get the functionality of uh, this one. Uh, one other point is that you know there are also older versions of ArcGIS. So if you happen to have one, right, and maybe earlier it was also cheaper and so on and so forth. If you happen to have an older version of ArcGIS. Um, you are perfectly fine you know the functionality is same the buttons etc might be different what is very good is that you know you can you can actually simply conduct google search for different functions and say i have arcgis version 10 point let's say 10.4 and say you want to say visualize symbology arcgis 10.4 it'll provide you all the steps for 10.4 with all the visuals not just you know the steps um, so there is there is incredible amount of uh, you know, uh, resource hundreds of YouTube videos explaining various functions of ArcGIS for different versions, right? So if you are a new beginner, all I want to motivate here is that there is nothing to, uh, you know, uh, you will be able to, uh, you know, pick up ArcGIS pretty easily. All it requires is a little bit time and patience and investment in terms of, you know, focused learning of ArcGIS from different sources. So you can take this class as the starting point but then you know the more you explore the more you're going to learn right so there's no uh, you know there's there's really a lot that one can achieve from these uh, from these software okay so so with that you know i'm going to you know so so one can just uh, you know one can download the software download the license purchase a license but ultimately you know what you're going to have is a downloaded version of ArcGIS that looks like the one on your screen. So under the start button, you know, I have ArcGIS and I have ArcGIS Pro. I also have ArcGIS Pro online help, which is very help, very, very good. Uh, you know, they're very responsive. Uh, it has a lot of resource. Again, there's a reason it's paid, right? It has something called IPython Jupyter Notebook, which basically means that the software is fully integrable with Python scripts. Uh, there is Python command prompt and Python uh, interactive terminal. So if you are a programmer who is well aware of, you know, Python, um, ArcGIS can fully integrate that language, okay? So I'm going to start with, uh, you know, starting with ArcGIS Pro. So, okay, so let's let the software begin. Um, so if you are, this is the first time, let's say, this is not the first time on my system. But if it is the first time that you're starting ArcGIS, it takes a while to set it, itself up. So if it's a couple of minutes, two, three, four, five minutes, and you're like, you know, this thing is always, it's only, start, it's not starting, so, so be patient, it's starting, it takes a bit while to set itself up, right? So the first bit is a bit slow to completely ramp up. Once you have it on your system, you close it, you start it again, it'll be faster, okay? All right. So here we go, we have home, we have learning resources, again, a lot of resources, right? It, um, throughout this journey of just looking at the software, we have seen that there is learning resources after resources after resources, which is fantastic, right? Okay, um, now in new project, I have to start a new project and I have four components of a new project. The first is called a map, the second is called a catalog, the third is called a global scene, the fourth is called a local scene and the fifth is start without a template okay so here for our purposes right you're free to explore all of those 
But for our purposes, you know, map and catalog are the most useful, uh, you know, uh, extensions. So I'm going to click on map. As soon as I click on it, it gives me a, you know, a screen which says create a new project. It asks me for a name it, and it asks me for a location. So whatever I do on this software is called a project, right? And just like any other software, when you're working on that software and you come back to it later, you have to, uh, you know, you want to start where you, you left. So this is this uh, right at the outset, it sort of uh, encourages you to, uh, you know, uh, uh, create a new project and save it. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to uh, um, say open. I'm going to go to desktop and I'm going to go to this software called Gaurav ArcGIS, which is just my name with ArcGIS. And here, you know, I have uh, this, uh, these two folders already there with me called data sets and practice sessions. I'm simply going to just uh, start a, a name a folder here at this location. I'm going to call it um, spatial statistics and spatial econometrics. Arc GIS project. Okay, and I'm going to say okay. All right, so it says cannot access. All right, so I'm going to say okay. Um, all right, so let's see if I can do something different and say uh, okay. Open. Uh, Okay, okay, all right. So I, I have to use an existing uh, folder. I cannot create a folder there. So I'm simply using the folder practice sessions, which is fantastic, right? I mean, it's one folder for us, right? So I'm going to name the project as Spatial Statistics and Spatial Econometrics Arc GIS Project. Okay, so create a new folder for this project. I'm going to say, okay, you can create a new folder and say, okay. So now it's setting itself up. Okay. All right. So it's going to take a one or two minutes. Okay. All right. It has now opened. So we have a panel. Um, we have on the left, we have the a contents pane. Right, a contents pane means it's a pane, uh, you know, a window which has all the contents that are listed on the middle screen, which is called the map. The map sort of stores or, you know, sort of arranges the data in layers, okay? So if you've worked with, you know, uh, some other layer based software, you would be aware that, you know, when you have, you're working with image data, you're often using this idea of one layer over the other, one layer over the other, so you can visualize things, work, compare, contrast, copy, manipulate, and so on and so forth, okay? Okay, so I have this third pane, which I, I'm going to just cancel. I'm just going to say, I don't need it for now. So I have two panes to begin with. I have map and I have contents. Now, under, so I have, I have project, which is the project which I'm working with on the top tab, then we have the map. Now map has many things. It says uh, go to XY, bookmarks, explore. So you know, right now it's at explore. So I can explore, right? I can just hold my, uh, you know, uh, 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 cursor and I can, I can visit different parts of the world. But what are these different parts of the world? Why am I able to, you know, visit these parts of the world simply on my screen, on the map? window. Well, you have this under contents, you have these buttons and on the first button is uh, list by drawing order. So we'll always have this button clicked, right? We'll always have this activated for our purposes. Under that, we have the map, the project that we have started, the map, right? The one that we have started and it has two layers. The first layer is called world topographic map India. The second is called world hillshade. And if you see, you notice there are these check marks in front of both these layers. So that means, I mean, the first intrigue that one would have is let me uncheck and see what happens. So let me do that. Let me just uncheck World Topographic Map India. All right. So those names and those, you know, so what's gone? So, you know, the boundaries are gone. 
okay the the country boundaries are gone some in the cities uh, you know uh, you know the, the locations of cities are gone the regional sort of names are gone and so on and so forth right so this layer called world topographic map is an inbuilt layer that comes with arcgis pro right and it gives me a starting point in terms of where am i on the map okay what is the second layer the second layer is called world hill shade okay if i remove it i have a completely blank screen so it is possible on your system you actually begin where with a completely blank screen and that is fantastic no problem okay so these inbuilt base maps are only there to help you they don't really have a substantive value so far as conducting analysis and so on and so forth okay so so okay because we have these base maps we are going to use them just for our purposes so let's look at world hill shade so but by looking at it i can tell that the world hill shade is somehow a elevation digital elevation map okay it has it is in a it is drawn in gray scale the darker the scale the higher the elevation it seems to me okay and how do i know that i have this region in india this is the indo gangetic plains and here are the himalayas right so the plains are all white and as we move from plains upward into the mountains the mountain range the himalayan range we have these darker colors providing us a understanding of a wonderful visualization of elevation right so 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 you know we can keep we can keep zooming in and you can see how wonderful you know these uh, you wonderfully these things are drawn right remember when we studied uh, you know uh, 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 things like uh, uh, you know the ridges and the plains spatial heterogeneity spatial dependence the first introductory class i had some you know very uh, uh, you know modest images to uh, sort of borrowed from elsewhere to explain those uh, concepts we could again go back and look at spatial heterogeneity spatial dependence uh, using these images right i mean if i look at this you know i i really don't see much of a heterogeneous structure but highly dependent structure in the sense that you know all the uh, you know uh, uh, ridges are of similar colors and the valleys are of similar colors right so the space there is there is high spatial dependence but maybe not so much spatial heterogeneity but if i just change this a little bit change my location a little bit here now i also have spatial heterogeneity if i move from south uh, you know uh, uh, west to north east i have a clear change in means and also i have spatial dependence right so different scales different locations we have different uh, you know uh, uh, characters uh, to our data okay so to this if i add the second layer i i can see the rivers now you know i can see the rivers i can see the boundaries i can look at the names of the locations and so on and so forth right so a really nice spatial visualization tool to begin with so let me just do one thing let me go to world hill shade and let me just say right click there when i right click i get these different options and on these options i'm going to say properties i'm going to click on properties you should click on all of them and 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 explore okay i'm going to click on properties under properties let's click on source under source the data type is arc gis map service so here is the data type is that it is is a data set that belongs to arc gis because i downloaded the software a paid software version they are just providing this base map to me for uh, you know a uh, a uh, uh, a good stand starting point let's say for my analysis right uh, the meter the units are meters it's called elevation it's a elevation service of arcgis and if i click on spatial reference you have this projected coordinate system now this is something we have formally introduced in our lectures geographic coordinate system right so here the geographic coordinate system of this map is wgs the world geodetic system 1984 something that we again looked at a standard system of visualizing data right now if we are putting one layer over the other and we have different projection systems then that should worry you okay so the first thing to check when we are combining the two data sets learning from two different layers right uh, that we will do throughout this course 
and if they are not coming from the same uh, you know uh, 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 you know uh, uh, coordinate system then the first step is to actually convert them to the same coordinate system right and to do that we will talk about it in a minute right okay again so you know it has many different uh, okay so datum here is again the projection system the dig the angular unit is degree right and uh, so you know degree is degrees you know we saw degrees so from the origin of the earth you know how many degrees east how many degrees west so you so the measurement that you get from these data are going to be in degrees right and there are some other information about uh, you know about this this layer okay so that's that and similarly for world topographic map we can go to properties and here we go so now here the data type is vector tile service so this second data set is a vector data set right uh, and it is the server it tells me where where, where where can you get it from you know the again the the, the vertical units are meter uh, the projected coordinate system is exactly the same as the previous one right which is the world hill shade so that's why putting them on each other provides us a good reference point that you know we are putting apples on apples so you know we can actually uh, you know we can actually believe that the boundaries are indeed uh, these boundaries these pink color boundaries are indeed sort of you know correctly placed so far as the elevation map is placed so they are both talking about the same locations on earth right okay um, all right so this is about the setup one more last thing that i want to just point out is that you know there are these you know in the view under map insert analysis and view we have two more interesting uh, you know uh, 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 tabs that we will be working with first is called as the catalog pane right when we began i said okay so there are two panes which are going to be useful for me the first one is called as the uh, the the the, uh, the map which is right here and the second is the catalog so arc map and arc catalog if you are using the older versions then these two come as two different uh, you know uh, 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 you know two different windows right uh, here in arcgis pro which is the latest version they are just integrated within the same window right in the older versions arc catalog opens as a separate window and arc map opens as a separate window but they talk to each other they're fully integrate with each other so far as if you make a change on our catalog it will it will show up in our for our map as well okay so what happens here so under catalog the uh, interest that we have mostly is in folders so under folders i see one folder which is already included is called sse arcgis project okay and if i keep my marker on it it shows me that this folder was modified on the 18th of july which is today which is when i'm recording this lecture and its path tells me that it's on desktop under the folder gaurav arcgis under practice sessions and then sssse arcgis project so phenomenal it is already you know uh, uh, providing me a location for where the project is going to be saved so let me just click on the arrow here to see what happens okay so this has sse arcgis project dot gdb now this geodatabase gdb is geodatabase if you say want to take the full project from one machine to the other you take the gdb file and run it there okay the gdb file will take all the information that you have been so let's say you have multiple like five layers that you have worked out it will contain all five layers okay so it is a it's a compressed geodatabase okay now the project has other files right the project has many other files which contain different informations now the next part is the last part in this module of this introduction or ramping up onto arcgis is uh, is adding a folder so i'm going to say insert map project map insert and i'm going to say add folder so i'm going to say add folder let's go to desktop go to arcgis now gaurav arcgis is the parent folder that i'm very interested in for this particular project so i'm going to say gaurav arcgis and i'm going to say okay i'm going to say go to to go to desktop 
Gaurav Vag GIS and I'm going to say add this folder. Okay, so I'm not double clicking on the folder, just selecting the folder and I'm saying, okay. All right, as soon as I do that, you see under folders, it has now added, it now added Gaurav Vag GIS. So if you have data sets scattered around, you can just add folders and access them directly from these data. So now I can see everything here. Okay, so under practice sessions, I already have another folder called India admin data. Under data sets, I have many different data sets. So I have all this pre-cooked stuff that I brought from somewhere and now I can visualize that directly on the catalog. Okay, not just this, I can actually move files, okay, move files within for between folders right from here, right? Let me show you something. So if I go to India ADM, I can say India RDS, I can say right click, copy, I can come to SSSE project and I can say uh, paste and it adds this folder here. Now let me go to Windows Explorer and show you what really happened there. So I go to my Windows Explorer. Okay, so here is my desktop. Here is Gaurav GIS. Now I go to data sets. No, I go to practice sessions and I go to SSSE. Look what happened. It actually added this entire folder, copied this folder on my Windows Explorer from its original location that's here. Not only that, all the contents of this folder will also be you know, brought out. Okay, so it's a very useful, uh, you know, tool where I can basically, it's, it's like an ArcGIS Windows Explorer integrated into ArcGIS. Okay, and it becomes very, very useful when we are actually working with imagery data that we will start to do in the next uh, session of ArcGIS. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you are here. Before we end, we are going to do one very important thing. Always, we are going to keep saving our, you know, our... Uh, our project. So I'm going to say save and it'll start, you know, if I close it and I start it, it'll start exactly at this point. Okay. So that's about it for this particular session. And let me just, uh, we will now start working with vector data and with polygons data, uh, uh, you know, uh, as a first sort of step into working with ArcGIS. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.